Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at another kind of substitution that we can perform if what we were doing before doesn't work. So this looks pretty similar to what we've been doing, and of course we're going to rewrite this with a pen. We're going to rewrite this as the integral of x times 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. Okay, so you probably would select u to be 2x minus 1. And then our next step is how, do, how are du and dx related? So du dx is 2. And so you can see how this is different. I have an x here. This is almost like too much inner derivative. And I don't know how to substitute for this x. The dx is fine, but what about this extra x? You might think you could take it out in front, but you cannot do that. You can only do that because you can only do that with constants. But I can use this equation right here. This tells me how u and x are related to substitute for that x. So if u equals 2x minus 1, then u plus 1 divided by 2 would equal x. Just solve this equation for x equals. And your substitution looks like this. The integral of x, which we now know is u plus 1 over 2, times u to the 1 half power, and then dx. So I guess we would write this as 1 half du equals dx. So I've got 1 half du. And now I can distribute this. I can, I'm going to pull this one half out with this other one half and make it a one fourth. And then I'm going to distribute my u plus one times my u to the one half. So I'm going to get u to the three halves. Now how do we get that? You know, I've got u to the one times u to the one half. You just add those exponents. So that's what u times u to the one half is. And then plus u to the one half du. And so now I've got it in a form that I can integrate. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to have 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves and then all of that at the end plus c. So that's how you do that. Let's look at this again with a definite integral. I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from 1 to 5 of x times 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 half power dx. And so your u is 2x minus 1, and your du dx would be 2. But we again, we have to substitute for this x. So x equals u plus 1 divided by 2. Now I also have to deal with my bounds of integration. So when x equals 1, from this equation right here, when x equals 1, you plug it in, and you get that u also equals 1. And then when x equals 5, we're going to get that u equals 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1 is 9. So let's take a look at our integral now. I'm going to have the integral from 1 up to 9 of x. Well, x is equal to u plus 1 over 2, so I've got u plus 1 over 2 times u to the negative 1 half power. And then my dx, I need to solve for that again, so 1 half du is equal to dx. So I've got 1 half du. So I'll pull this 1 half out and distribute again. So I'll have 1 fourth integral from 1 to 9 of u. Now when you distribute u to the first times u to the negative 1 half, you get u to the positive 1 half because you add those exponents. And then plus u to the negative 1 half du. So our antiderivatives will be 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus 2 u to the 1 half. Make sure that's a u there. We're going to evaluate this from 1 to 9. So our last step is to plug our 9 in and then our 1 and subtract. So I've got 1 fourth times. If we plug in a 9 for u, the square root of 9 is 3 and 3 cubed is 27. Remember this is power over root. So that's 2 thirds times 27. And then plug in 9 for this u. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times that 2 is 6. And then we still have to do all of that. Now we have to minus. Now we're going to plug in our 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 cubed is 1. So that's just 2 thirds plus 2. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to simplify that. All right, let's take a look at another example. I'm going to, let, I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 7 of x 
times x plus 1 to the negative 1 third power. So we'll let u equal x plus 1. And let's go ahead and solve that for x because I see I'm going to need that here. So u minus 1 is equal to x. And then du dx is equal to 1, which means that du and dx are exactly equal to each other. So let's do our bounds of integration. When x equals 0, u equals x plus 1, so u is 1. And when x equals 7, u is going to equal 8. So our integral becomes the integral from 1 to 8 of u minus 1 times u to the negative 1 third du. And we'll distribute again. So I've got the integral from 1 to 8 of u to the 2 thirds power minus u to the negative 1 third power du. Let me make sure that's a 3 there. There we go. Alrighty, so now we can integrate by doing our our little fundamental theorem of calculus. I add 1 to 2 thirds. Adding 1 would be, make that equal 5 thirds. And dividing by 5 thirds is the same thing as multiplying times 3 fifths. So 3 fifths u to the 5 thirds power minus 3 halves u to the 2 thirds power. And we're going to evaluate this between 1 and 8. So we just have to plug it in. Let's plug in our 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 5th power is 32. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So that's that top part. And then minus, I'm going to have to scoot down here, so I hope you've got room on your notes there. Uh, oh, I got, I can do that. 1, that's just going to be 3 fifths minus 3 halves. I don't want to try and scoot it in. We'll just do it here. So we plug in 1, and you, 1 basically to any power is just 1. So that's going to be 3 fifths minus 3 halves. Okay, we're going to take a look at some shortcuts that we're going to need to know. And that they have to deal with even and odd functions. If a function is even, then the function has y-axis symmetry. So the integral from negative a to a of f of x dx is going to equal twice the integral from 0 to a. You can only, you can find just one half of your interval and just double that. And, and a, a famous even function would be like your x squared function. It's got y-axis symmetry. So this area over here matches and is equal to the area over here. So you can use that to your benefit whenever you're solving integrals. And then if a function is odd, then it has origin symmetry. You can rotate it 180 degrees and it looks the same. So if you integrate between negative a to a of f of x dx, you're going to get zero. Um, I'll show you one, like here's y equals x cubed. And what we're saying here, if, if this is your negative a, all of this integral would, would count as a negative value because it's below the x-axis. And then the integral on the right-hand side would count as a positive value, so that's why it works out to be zero. So let's take a look at some simple questions. Given f of x is even, and we have the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x equals 3, let's find these values. Since it's even, from negative 5 to 5, this is going to be twice the value from 0 to 5, so that's just going to be 2 times 3, or 6. And then from negative 5 to 0, if it's even, that's it's symmetric. So the area from negative 5 to 0 is the same as the area from 0 to 5, so that's going to be 3. And then this is something we already know. The 4 can come out in front, and we can just take 4 times our answer that we got in A. So 4 times 6 is 24. So there's some examples of an even function. Now if f is odd, and we have the same integral from 0 to 5 is 3, then our integral from negative 5 to 5 is going to equal 0, because to the left it's going to be a negative value. And from negative 5 to 0, it would be negative 3. And then the same concept here, we can pull the 4 out and multiply it times our answer in A. 4 times 0 is 0. So that's that, and I will see you guys tomorrow.